finding something new Cause I need something different And different looks like you I am about to um, go on because I don't want to take your time up. It is Thursday. It is 12 o'clock. And um, we're just going to go into this quick word today. Hey, Essence. Hey, beautiful. Please share this with somebody. Um, please, please share this with somebody. Hey, y'all. It's your sister, your girl, Jamika of All Things Kingdom by Jamika, And I'm just coming live um, for a bread and cheese snack for the day. Amen. Um, and I call it bread and cheese. I'm, it's just one of my little silly things. Um, but let's get into the bread, which is the word of God. And then cheese is just that little extra on the side. When I say extra on the side, just some practical tips, some practical measures and in, in living um, that we can implement in our lives. But I want to talk about um, the hypocrite today. And I want to talk about it in a more optimistic um way than what we know usually when we think of the word hypocrite it's a derogatory term um it's something that is used that's in a really negative sense which ultimately it is um but i want to spin it and use it for our good today where we might not realize sometimes when we're being hypocritical um but we are um and it's by our actions not actually what we necessarily say but what we do not matching what we say um and sometimes i believe that um, more common than not it is um not intentional it's just we had a right thought we had a um a nice idea um we we felt it was right to do um but it just didn't happen um it just didn't um we didn't we didn't we didn't complete the action that went along with what we said hey claire how are you so i'm gonna if you guys don't mind holding on one second i'm gonna grab my little munchkin because i hear her calling me hello All right, y'all. I'm back. <laughs> um, I am back. All right, I'm back. So, y'all might hear my little munchkin in the background. This is what moms do. Kingdom moms work and ministry. Work and ministry. Mom, work, ministry. Um, blessing, Stefan. Um, Stefan. Um, hey, how are you? I'm sorry, I'm reading fast. But you guys, so I want to talk about the hypocrite. Let me go to the scriptures real quick. And it's going to speak for itself. Matthews 23. I'm going to read real quick. 1 through 13. I know it sounds like a lot, but let me just read it to you real quick. Amplified version. Then Jesus said to the multitude and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses seat of authority. So observe and practice all they tell you but do not do what they do for they preach but do not practice they preach but do not practice they tie up heavy loads hard to bear and place them on sh men's shoulders but they themselves will not lift a finger to help bear them they do all their works to be seen of men for they make wide their phylacteries, small cases, enclosing their certain scriptures and passages worn during prayer on the left arm and forehead. They carry those things and make long their fringes that are worn by all male Israelites. We're talking about history um, here, um, Israelites, according to the command. They do all those things. They carry the word of God. They wear the adornments, but yet 
verse 6 says, And they take pleasure in, and thus love the place of honor at feast and the best seats in the synagogue. And to be greeted with honor, they love to be greeted in honor in the marketplaces. And to have people call them rabbi, they love these things. But they are not to be called rabbi. They are not to be called teacher. For you have one teacher, and you all are brothers. Almost there. And do not call anyone. Listen to this. This is the word of the Lord. This is Jesus himself saying this in Matthew 23 verse 9. And do not call anyone in the church on earth father. For you have one father who is in heaven. I could put a pen right there, but I'm going to keep going. And you must not be called masters, leaders. For you have one master, one leader, the church. He who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself with haughtiness and empty pride shall be humbled, brought low. And whoever humbles himself, whoever has a modest opinion of him himself and behaves accordingly shall be raised to honor. So I read this and I was like, okay, God, this is talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees in particular that had become more engulfed in themselves than actually what they represented to the people. They became more of the one who was to be served versus the one that was to serve. And that is not the order of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to serve. Jesus humbled himself. He came meek and humble as a servant, right? So he's teaching us don't look for them to look at you and say, wow, this is God. No, look to me to say that this is God. Take it more off of what you do and what you say and how you say it and how you dress and how you carry yourself and how great you lead and let them focus on all of those things being me. And so I want to focus on that as being hypocritical, not the one who is intentionally trying to make themselves be bigger and better, but even the insidious nature of being a hypocrite when we are called to be servants of God, to lead even to lead people when God calls us to lead people he's still saying I am the leader the Bible here said don't call yourself the, the master leader I am the master leader so don't ever think it's because of your leadership skills it's because of your leadership abilities that these people are falling in alignment it's because you're following me don't ever let it be all about you. I have always been so careful and um, I pray that I, can, I continue to work in this and operate in this where I don't want people to ever think that I got the special sauce, okay? Meaning like this is be, go to, you know, Jamaica because she has the answer. No, I want to point you always to Christ. I don't want to ever be somebody's small God. So I don't, no leader should ever want people to always need them in order for them to see God. We want to teach people. We want to equip people to be able to reach God for themselves. There's no longer the need for a priest to sit in the box for confession. Hello, somebody. The, the curtain has been rent. And I know I am on lanes, but I'm telling you what is in the biblical, what's in the Bible what's in the word of God, that we don't have to um, fall trapped to be hypocrites, even unintentionally. We don't have to, you know, it's one thing for us to tell our children one thing, do not curse or do not do these things, but yet our children find us doing those things. That's a hypocrite. And sometimes we don't realize that. I know there's been times when I've told my daughter, make your bed before you leave the house. Do not leave the house without making your bed. And then that morning I was running late to work and didn't make the bed and what did she say to me you didn't make your bed this morning that that's a bit hypocritical <laughs> not intentional right but and I'm not saying that sometimes things like that don't happen but we can't stay there and then when it does happen we need to acknowledge you know what there will be times where you will be running late and you do not make your bed but don't make it a habit to live where you do not tend to the things of where you sleep and you rest um, before you leave the house. That, that's what needs to happen in order for us to not fall in that cycle of being a hypocrite. 
because sometimes we'll think, oh, I'm not a hypocrite. You know, I don't do, we, we think of it in the realm of sin nature, right? Oh, I, I always practice what I preach. Do you? Because preaching, preaching, of course, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But God always teaches us some practical measures on how to deliver. I, I love what I love about God is sometimes we can um, get in a, in a place of being a hypocrite when we're in an old season. And when I say that you get in an old season, you won't evolve with the change. You will, you won't change. You know, when when God was speaking in a cloud or when God was speaking through the mountain, when God was speaking through the wind. He's not, I, I don't know about y'all, but I ain't hear God speaking to me in the wind in an audible fashion today. I hear him speaking to me through his spirit that's within me. Um, I hear him speaking to me through revelation and visions and dreams and even through the word of God when I read. But I don't hear God... Uh, speaking to me through no no fire and so there's been a, a dispensation as to how he's changed how he's spoken even the dispensation of himself in the presence of jesus christ right when he came into this earth that was a new dispensation of god that the people had yet to understand we can actually touch him we can look at him we can we can literally hear him and look at him and see all of our senses engaged with him in one they couldn't do that before so sometimes we become hypocrites at times when we want to Knowledge the new season and dispensation of Christ. Oh my God. I pray that y'all are getting that. Let me give you proof of that. Because in Matthew 25, 35 through 40. Hey there, um, Elder Sarah, uh, 35 through 40. 20, Matthew 25, 35 through 40. Jesus ends up describing to them what they have done for him. And they're like, when did I clothe you? When did I visit you? When, when did I go see you in prison, Jesus? What are you talking about? Why are you saying that I did these things for you? And Jesus said, when you did this for the ones that I sent to you. I told you to clothe them. I told you to visit them. I told you to even go into the prisons that and go and see about them that are in the prisons. I told you to do that. And when you did it for them, you did it for me. Oh my God. And so if we don't think about that as being hypocritical, if we won't do, if we say, I believe I will work and I will serve the people of God, I will do what Christ has a commissioned me to do. That's a commission. Jesus himself said it. That's a commission. So if we say that we're going to do these things according to the scriptures and according to what God has commissioned us to do in this earth as believers filled with his spirit. If we don't do the clothing, if we don't do the visiting, if we don't go to encourage those that are even in the prisons, are we being hypocrites when we say that we do the great commission of our Lord? Yeah. And that's one of those ones that you'd be like, hmm. <laughs> I'm not saying everybody called to do that. I'm not saying you, my sister, specifically are called to go into the prison because that, that might not be your ministry. But if you're leading like he told those Pharisees and those Sadducees to not think about them looking at you and sitting you in the most respectful, respectful and honorable places and sending them and equipping them that I've given you charge over to be able to do these commissions, that's where it's at. Yes, and all we do in word or deed, do it all in his name. That is it, Elder Sarah. We just got to do it all in his name. And as leaders, if you are called as a leader of people, the anointing is on you to lead them. Your main job as a leader is to equip them, to equip the body of Christ to do these great commissions that God says are what he says we are doing in order to not be hypocrites, in order to not wear our best attire and look so beautiful on a Sunday morning to wear our best attire or to be walked up to the pulpit. But then no one is visiting. No one is clothing. No one is feeding. No one offered me water to drink. It's in the word of God. Oh my God. We cannot get so enamored with self unaware. We cannot get so, uh, so much. Listen, I love a string of pearls and I love a stiletto heel with bling, but we can't rest in that as believing that that's a part of the great commission because it's not, that's an accessory to what we desire. We like those things, but don't let us get caught up in, thinking that those things are the works of God. They're not. They're just things that we like. I don't know about y'all, but God ain't never told me. He ain't, I, he ain't never told never told me that I had to put on a brooch. Because I love these things. I'm telling you things that I like. Put on a brooch. 
put on a hat, put on some pearls, put on the bling brace. God never told me to do those things. But what he did tell me is to clothe those who need clothing, to visit those who need to be visited, or to show someone else or cultivate someone else in the gifts that you see upon them. Somebody that loves to go do prison ministry, I always say, I don't know. I don't think I'm called to it. I, 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 I got this thing about just hearing them doors close behind me when I go in. But that might be something I need to be dealt with. Them. But if somebody else is called to prison ministry, they, they love going up there. Then, and if I have the tools to help equip them, if I have some type of knowledge or wisdom to show them about potentially exegeting the scriptures, which is something that I that God has um, taught me how to do. The leaders over me have taught me how to do. If that is something that I can help equip those who are sent to go into the prison, then that's what we do. So I love you guys. Hey, hello hey cousin i love you um i'm just letting y'all know we can't be hypocrites and can i tell you those who are watching they will pull our cards to let us know they'd be like yeah thank you so much for calling me about my tithes and offering but you ain't called me to say boo to say how are you doing your kids all right are you are you sane over there because i know you got six of them and y'all home during COVID and you're homeschooling, working and trying to maintain. I know they'll pull your card. But I love y'all. <laughs> God bless you. The Greek definition of hypocrites is to pretend to be on stage performing. So we definitely must be mindful and let God be God. Listen, listen, that's deep. Wait, let me read that again. To pretend to be on stage performing. I ain't with it, Steph. I, I ain't with that. Mm -mm. I ain't with that. I hope y'all not with that either. I don't want to be out here performing. I don't want to be Millie Vanilli in it. Y'all remember Nilly Vanilli snatched them. Billy, Billy Brown, Dr. Brown. Come on. Dr. Brown is a radical. <laughs> but I don't want to Millie Vanilli this thing. I don't want to be up there. Girl, you know it's true. Du -du -du -du. Oh, 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 I love you. And then I'm not really singing. I'm not, I'm pretending. I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. I ain't mean to go nilly, nilly, vanilla on y'all, but I just had to let y'all know what I was saying. But I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Share this with somebody. I love you, Billy. Peace out, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day. <laughs> right, Steph? You be blessed too. Look, my girl calling me. I'm coming. Here we go. Peace, y'all.